Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with a longtime friend of mine, Nolan Mobley of Vatican. Nolan and I came up together in the Savannah scene, and it's been awesome to see everything that Vatican has been able to accomplish. So grab a cup of coffee and wake the fuck up. I'm with Nolan Mobley from Vatican. Nolan and I go fairly well back, I guess. Dude, I was actually looking at a picture of us. Um, I have like a private photo album on Facebook. Right. And uh, I was scrolling through and found like one of my first Instagram pictures of me, you, and I don't know if you remember Patrick Miller. It was at Taco Bajo. Yes. On the couch. Yep. Yeah. I was In like, yeah, that was, that was so long ago. Yeah. That was like 2012. Right. Had to have been. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was definitely 2012. Cause Patrick, I think moved the beginning of summer of 2013. So yeah, that was what, that's Damn, nine that's years ten, ago. Nine, nine years ago. Crazy. Good Lord. But and we, I mean, that, we, yeah. I knew you before that then. Yeah. So on um, beans and breakdowns, we talk about coffee. We talk about hardcore. What coffee are you drinking on your side of the television? Uh, what is it called? Um, it's the yellow one. My girlfriend buys it. Let me look it up real quick. It's like cafe something. Oh, Bustello? Yeah. Yes. The Cuban stuff? Yep. Yeah. Uh, How do you make it? She does. We had done, um, she used to just use a coffee pot. And then, of course, over COVID, we have to try everything new under the sun. Um, so we did, I think she's still doing French press now. Mm-hmm. Um, we tried slow drip, but I think we're on French press, which I let her handle that. Right. Uh, I literally don't even know how to do it. I'm sure it's easy, but it's not hard. I could learn it. Just yes. so everybody knows I could learn it. He could do it. I just haven't yet. But you like the, that it's a very <clears throat> traditional, it's hard for me to drink actually. Cause I'm very like on this left side of the spectrum. You like when it comes to, and no, dark. I, I like extra. So no, that's the more traditional, like caramel chocolate. It's very old school. I would say uh-huh. it has like a certain taste that is really hard for me to drink now. Cause I drink super fruity, floral oh, African coffees. I respect that. So that's- I, I'm drinking a, it's a natural Ethiopian bean. This is going to get really nerdy for a second. It's a, natural Ethiopian bean from the Guji region, which is a, it's a very popular coffee growing region in Africa and it's notes of blueberry and honey. How much does a bag of this cost? I want you to go ahead and flex it's not, on it. It's not much. It's, it's really it's not, not. It's a locally roasted coffee. So I try okay. to, Montreal has like a ton of amazing local coffees, but then also sometimes my f- family will send uh, coffee from the States. I love counterculture, which is from uh, Durham. Yeah. And the shop that I actually started working at was counterculture. So I still like drinking some of theirs because it reminds me like, Oh, this is where I came from. Oh, that's so sweet. It's not my favorite anymore because I go to coffee shops here and like nerd out and become friends with everybody. And people think I'm weird. Dude, honestly. uh, So coffee, I was never a coffee guy. And then I moved here and then obviously we have one, you know, every hundred yards. Yep. Um, so we lived for five to six years. We were like right next to Foxy down here. And so it was just like, okay, well this is like an activity to get up with the boys and go do something. So started going get getting like, you know, a mocha. Mm-hmm. So that was the beginning, you yes. know, cause I'm, I'm not trying to d- to dive too deep. So get the mocha. And then, uh, then we, they opened up Henny Penny up the street. That was the new spot. Oh yeah. So then started doing recently here, matcha, which I'm a big fan of the matcha. Oh yeah. Um, and then after that, I was like, there was one day recently where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try like cold brew, nothing in it. Just like bitter and, honestly disgusting because uh-huh. that is not my thing I, I like a lot of cream yeah a lot of sugar because i'm you know i'm a, a little a little bit classless when it comes to coffee uh but i was like this is fine 
And so I think I'm just like fine with coffee now. I'm like slowly uh, dipping my toes in. It's a process. Like it's uh, you have to kind of wean yourself. And then, you know, a lot of people don't like black coffee and that's fine. It, it Coffee is not about following some elitist idea. It's all about, you know, you find what you like and you kind of stick to it, but you can explore. That's what's so cool about it. It's like music. Yeah, for sure. In the, uh, I think the coffee that really does it for me, we had this uh, Cuban spot open up like three blocks from the hotel. Um, and it's super cheap. So I was just going there like every day for lunch and uh, sometimes for breakfast, but they have... I'm pretty sure it's Cafe uh, Bustillo or Bustello, however you pronounce it. Um, but it's in a cup that's like, no lie, like that big. Mm-hmm. And so, and they, I'm pretty sure they load it with sugar. But anyhow, the first time I get it, I'm drinking at work. And I'm like, damn, man, like the adrenaline is rushing oh, yeah. through me. I'm like, wow, I've never felt like this. I'm like literally hitting up people on my phone who I haven't talked to in months Cause we had like a falling out and I'm like, Hey man, just want to let you know, we're cool. I'm like, I'm like, why am I doing this? It's powerful. And, yeah. And then <laughs> thinking back on, I was like, man, maybe the coffee just like made me do it. I could feel the serotonin flowing through my veins. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was wild for sure. Is it, is what's the, what's the spot called? Cuban window cafe. And they opened up, um, in the middle of the pandemic. And somehow now are like booming. Like every time I go there, line like they have they actually have the window put in now, so you can go up to the window and order. Mm-hmm. Uh I always call mine in just to beat the crowd. Uh, but it is packed all that's day, awesome. every day. Yeah. But it that's the spot. That's cool. Yeah, I, I Cuban coffee, like as far as traditional, that's my favorite. There's a little cafecito spot here, like that serves all those weird sugary Cuban coffee drinks. Yeah. And uh I that's my like guilty pleasure. <laughs> oh, and then we tried uh I want to say this was the beginning of the pandemic also like before things got like the cases started jumping here. Um Vietnamese coffee. Mm. Haley Haley was working at Collins Quarter and they have like this crazy list of different coffees. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I tried Thai and Vietnamese. Um Vietnamese was good, but it's definitely like I can drink like half of it. And I'm, and then, you know, I'll have a little stomach ache cause it's a little yeah, too sweet. A lot of condensed milk. Yeah. It'll, it'll wear a man down for sure. Oh yes. So is it, what would you say that your favorite coffee shop is, uh, in Savannah? Henny Penny. Like I never really loved Foxy just cause like, I'm not, I don't have social anxiety necessarily, but I don't know. Like I definitely get a vibe there. Uh, and feel a little weird. Uh, is it so, too hipster for you or I don't want to say it's too hipster. Cause like, you know, I got a lot of friends who I would say are probably considered hipster. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's like a lot of people, but very quiet. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's soon. And since we're coming in from the back where we live through the alley, you got to walk through the courtyard. Everybody's going to look up at you. You're going to walk through the little room where people do their computer work. Everybody's going to look up at you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then it was always like line out the door. So we started going to Henny and I've actually moved out to like Bonaventure area, which is for those listening or watching, um, probably, uh, six to 10 minutes from the, you know, the happenings. Uh, but I'll still drive to Henny, like anytime I want coffee, right. Uh, I'll pick the boys up and we'll ride over there and then maybe take a, a walk around the park afterwards. But, uh, Everybody knows us there and knows what we want. And they're super uh, friendly and welcoming every time. So that's the spot for sure. That's tight. I actually have never been to Henny. So it's like, I was uh, weird about going there at first. Cause it's like, they have one half that's dedicated as like a children's art space. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe adults are not supposed to go here. I don't know. Like that, that's just kind of like what I had in my head. Right. And we ended up going there when Foxy was too busy one day and, um, got through it. And I was like, huh, I, again, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here, <laughs> but we just kept going back. Cause you know, to beat the line. Right. And, uh, I don't even think they do like kids crafts anymore. Like that area is still there, but I never see anybody in there. So 
I don't know. I always thought it was like an ice cream shop. I wish. That would honestly be sick. I know they used to have uh, Sundays. They would do, I think, crepes. They and had donuts like a, or something like that? Oh, yeah. They have donuts, vegan donuts, regular donuts, um, paninis. Mm. Uh, what else? Oh, the kolaches. Oh, yeah. Which, the kolaches. Which I pronounced wrong for a while before somebody, somebody finally corrected me. So. Yeah. Luckily, my wife is, she grew up in Houston. So I learned early on it's a kolache. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was calling it collage because I was like, nah, like nothing here could pr- be pronounced too easy. So <laughs> maybe I need to like go a little harder on the pronunciation. So I was uh, like, yeah, may funny. I have a, uh, I'm trying to think of bacon and cheddar collage. They didn't say anything the first couple of times. They were just like, yeah. man, we're going to let him take that L. And then Multiple. finally, yeah, finally, like we got friendly enough. They're like, oh, you probably mean Kalachi. And I was like, you are correct. That is what I mean. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. <laughs> the new music video, which is sick, by the way. Like, thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. It's amazing. I know that you guys are released on Unified now. So how did that kind of, you want to walk through that whole, because like, I don't, who are you guys with for like the the last album and the EP with, um was it 36 Stitches? Uh, what was it? It was 31 Stables was the single and we had dropped a couple singles off the LP before that came out. But that was uh, through our manager's label, uh, Scott. Um, so essentially, he he is the label and the manager, which I can see, like you know, there's definitely conflict of interest. Uh, a little and, bit, yeah. And we were, so no, yeah, we were a little weary of that. Uh, but Scott has a good reputation um, and honestly a great guy. So he uh, and he still manages us now and helps us make the decisions and, and network and such. Um, so he did that, uh, the video budgets for those were not great and, but we worked with it and not, not, not proud of those videos, but we were all like, we can do better than this. And money is obviously the issue, but, uh, next time around we have to do better. So COVID hit, uh, things, well, things started getting shut down two weeks before we were supposed to go to Europe. And it was supposed to be a big year of like touring on that LP. So I was definitely, I think, well, I mean, I think all of us were very, very bummed and we had gone from like our busiest year to just being stuck at home. So uh, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it was definitely like a battle of like trying to be okay with like sitting still and, and kind of letting time pass Cause that's one thing I hate is like, I just think constantly about like, was that a productive day or did, you know, if this was my last day, was that productive enough? I just like keep pressure on myself. So anyhow, we started working on new music and I got in touch with unified through Scott and started talking and we've been in touch with a couple of labels and uh, they right out of the gate, we were like, man, this is awesome. Like even just talking to them, I think Tom had talked to them on the phone a couple of times and he was like, yeah, they're really cool. So let's look into this and see what it's about. So had the songs ready. Uh, We recorded those in like January and then usually everything else before, like we would be like last minute, like, okay, what are we going to do for a video? What idea can we scrap together? So this time we were trying to plan like the visual stuff months in advance and I'm glad we did because I think it all paid off. Uh, so we were like trying to figure out who to record the video with. Um, and Eric had done the vein video for uh, Virus Vibrance. Yep. And Hosian's like super good friends with all the band guys. He did a tour with them. Uh, he like filled in for Fuming Mouth on a tour they did together. So they got super close. Um, Wait, so Hosian, were, Hosian toured with Fuming Mouth? Yeah, yeah. Hosian like filled in for Fuming Mouth, I think, twice. Uh, what? Yeah, and he had done... I want to say it was Summer of Fear 2, maybe. It was like Vane, Fuming Mouth, I think Sanction, maybe. Um, but yeah, they hit him up. And this was when he was like long hair. Uh, no offense if he watches this, still kind of nerdy looking. You know what I mean? Like well, that's how I know him. I don't know him any other way. Yeah, he's like suave guy now. He's like 
started hitting the gym. He cut his hair. Uh, he looks clean as, as shit now. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, he, uh, all those guys were like, yeah, you should uh, hit up Eric. Cause he'll, whatever you want to have done, he'll make it happen. So I was going to talk to him for like a month, just like storyboarding. What's the budget? How can we make this happen? Who do we need to hit up? Where are we going to do it? So, uh, we picked Chicago. I think that's where Eric's based and, uh, drove up the 18 hours, uh, which was not terrible for me for once. Like I actually slept for most of it. And, um, we get up there or we drove to Indianapolis first crashed with Mike's mom. Uh, got up the next day, drove to Chicago to meet Eric, which I was expecting Eric to be like a younger guy. Like I thought he was gonna be like my age, but he was like an older guy, but still super cool. Mm -hmm. I, I would guess like early forties. And if he's watching for whatever reason, and that's wrong, then I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but he was like, he was like, yeah, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have to be super quick tomorrow. So everybody's got to be like on point and came in the next day and everybody was on point. We crushed it. Uh, just kind of followed his lead on what needed to happen and, and when, and um, we got out I'm trying to think we got there at 7am and got out at 7pm because that's all the time we had. So used up every bit of that. And then uh, he was quick for the edits too. Like, I think we had the first cut back within two days. Wow. And then it was just minor changes from there because he essentially knew what we wanted. Like, Posey uh, and said it yesterday. He was like, it felt like they were all part of the band because they like, they have to be essentially, they have to know the exact direction you want to take things. So, but yeah, they killed it. Couldn't be happier with the video. Yeah. It's the EP. I, I listened to the EP today too because it, I mean, all of it dropped basically yesterday. Yeah. So I'm blown away with you guys. Like there's like a very sentimental uh, place in my heart for Vatican. Cause I've watched you and coastlines and yeah. that transform into Vatican. It's so crazy for me to like open up YouTube and not even search it. It's just like unified Vatican. I was like, wait, what? Dude, it's, so. it's, it's all very weird. Um, I don't even know where to start. Like, I remember the jinx actually closed. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know this, the jinx closed. And right before it did, I was like, man, there's like Baroness record on the wall. There's a Kyle Essa record on the wall. There's a black Tusk record on the wall. I was like, gotta have a record in here at some point, which found out the other day they're reopening it. Uh, yeah. Where the distillery was. I don't know. Oh. Do you remember the yeah. yeah, that's actually, that used to be teasers. Yes. We were literally just watching like a poison, the well set from there. So we were like, wow. So goal is to still get a record in there. Um, but yeah, it's been a weird ride. And I don't think until like now, and even now I don't know that's set in, like this could be kind of of a career thing mm -hmm. to some degree at least, but it's always been like, all right, we'll just, you know, keep pumping money into it. It's fun. I don't care. So, uh, thinking about it now where it's like, Oh, you might get some money back. Maybe that could be cool. So, but what, but look at like your label mates or era and who it's else? weird straight from the path Silverstein straight. Yeah. Silverstein straight from the path. I was looking at the alumni. I had like bear tooth and uh, it had D's nuts. Hosian <laughs> Hosian literally couldn't believe there's a band called D's nuts. And uh, I just happened to look yesterday and I was like, you'll never believe who's in, in the alumni of this, uh, this label. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, like the Arbor's murder was in the alumni. I think. Um, Lane. Uh, cross faith is another one, but yeah, uh -huh. it's the whole thing is just super weird. Like I'm taking it in slowly. Uh, I don't, I don't even know that, that it's set in. Cause today I was thinking about, I was like, man, a lot has happened in like 24 hours. But I don't know that I feel it yet. Um, it's going to kick in at some point though. I'm trying to just be chill about it. Yeah. You're, you seem to be like very, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be calm. It. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which I mean, I think all of us, regardless of anything that happens, like I'm just a guy, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, up until I was forced to get better at guitar, like I was not good at guitar and I was just trying to have fun like everybody else. So I, and I think that's all it'll ever be. If money comes with it, that's cool. If big tours come with it, that, I mean, that to me is like the more rewarding part is like getting to do it on a bigger level, I guess. But 
I'm I'm just happy to be doing it. So do you have a what would you say pre-COVID, of course, because I mean not a lot of memories are made during COVID. What would you say that y'all's like your personal most favorite show moment has been so far in the the Vatican uh, lifespan? Probably. Uh, oh, okay. This is easy. Actually. Um, every time I die, I played the jinx for whatever reason. Uh, yeah. Somehow we managed to get on that, which was dumb. Like I was like, we should, somebody else should have gotten picked, but it is what it is. We're going to take it. So uh, yeah, that was sold out and then oversold. Cause they were like, let's see how many extra people we can cram in here. And so playing to like sold out small ass venue that's packed tight with like my friends and people I know. Yeah. Still definitely the most fun I've ever had playing. Um, I'm sure there's some other shows that I would say are like noteworthy, obviously, but uh, yeah, that one for sure is like number one. That one takes the cake. But growing up in Savannah, like the jinx is like, that's the place. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like the threshold. The epitome of musical culture is the jinx, you know, like hate breed played Baroness came out of there. black tusk. Like you said. So I always saw like, I've always in my heart wanted to play the jinx at least one time. And so um, I, I know exactly what you're saying about playing every time I die to a packed jinx. Yes. yes. It was like, it was literally like Disney channel movie moment. You know what I mean? Like where the, the young guy gets what, you know, you've been wanting him to get the whole movie. Brink, uh, yes, Brink yeah, takes okay, team pump and suds and wins the championship. Literally that. Uh, but yeah, it was like definitely a moment that uh, again, like I don't think I like am very good. I try to put myself in the moment and be like, all right, enjoy this. And I do, but like, I don't think I'm experiencing it to the fullest degree. Cause I'm like to a certain extent, I'm like, all right, you have to be like in the zone. So it was definitely after the fact that I was like, wow, that was like actually insane. I, I think we were sitting like at the back corner of the stage every time I was playing. And um, so one of them got on the fucking bar, like jumped mm-hmm. over to the bar and started like walking and playing on the bar. And I was like, this is actually crazy. <laughs> like, this is weird that I'm even in this position right now. Right. Very, That's very crazy. surreal. Yeah. Oh man, that's insane. I didn't even know that you guys had opened for them. Like I, I wasn't there for that show, obviously, but yeah, I, it was uh, us and John Edwards band sins of godless men. Mm-hmm. Um, they opened, we followed and uh, yeah, that was wild. Um, I will say another noteworthy show was like, this is hardcore was cool. Um, but I don't think it had the same vibe as, uh, do you know that band Keonashi? Oh yeah. Yeah. They're on like equal vision now. Yeah, um, they go hard. Incredibly unique band. And like Mackie was like, yo, we need to tour this band because they were doing their record release. And I was not familiar, but uh, listening to the songs, I was like, I don't know, man, maybe that's not, you know, my thing. I don't know how people react to this and not, not hating on them at all. I was just like, I don't know that our sound would vibe in this crowd. Uh, but because we played their record release at voltage lounge in Philly, I think their audience is so supportive of them that they were super supportive of us. And so next time we came back to Philly, it was, I think with the Acacia strain, because we did like five days with them, that was a huge reaction. And then because of both of those, I think our, this is hardcore reaction because we got we were opening Sunday. Yeah. So I was like, damn, dude, this is going to be rough, but, uh, went a lot better than expected because those kids were like, Oh, we're going to go support Vatican again. So again, like a surreal thing that I'm definitely grateful for. Well, you know, it's always good to have Philly on your side. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I, I keep track of, uh, I watch a lot of hate five, six. So seeing you guys set pop up too was another moment where it's like, wow, Vatican is getting a lot of attention. This Dude, is that, really cool. Yes. That was like a, um, like a band bucket list moment. Yeah. It's like, we have to get a hate five, six set. 
And uh, I was like, when I meet Sonny, I'm going to be super nice. So that way, like he won't like, even if it's bad, he'll post it. Cause I was worried. I was like, what if he just doesn't even post it? What if he hates it? Um, but yeah, then like anytime we were in the area, I think we have like five or six or seven, eight, five, six videos now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was just like, man, it's crazy that like he will come out for anything and just like film and like, he doesn't have to do any of this stuff, but incredible person, honestly. Yeah. Well, now he's even starting like a, uh, an audio tree for heavy music. Yeah. Uh, that he's got like the, um, what's that service he has on his site where you can like look up bands that are kind of similar to other bands or like you can put in your interests or you, you can put in your likes and your dislikes and it will pitch you like a list of bands from like top to bottom, like mm-hmm. most in relevant common with, or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Most relevant to irrelevant. Uh, Oh, it's called Sage. Yes. So, yeah. So I made that. I haven't done that. Pro- I didn't know that's what that was. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you can just put in like what you love and hate and based off of, I guess like what other people like or don't like, uh, it kind of feeds you what you should like. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know, just the fact that he's like dedicated his life to doing things like that. That's sick. Like that's, that's the kind of shit I want to be doing is just like, if you're having fun with something, like just go all in on it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, just to close things up, this is how I like to close the podcast is what city has your favorite beans and breakdowns? Actually, no, this is easy. Long Island for sure. Long Island is like uh, a different breed of people. Um, I couldn't tell you the, the spot we went to before we played um, AMH last time. It was a local spot that Lump- Lumpy from Sanction took us to. He's also doing uh, Days Records. So shout okay. out to them. Uh, also, he has a page literally called like Coffee Guy 1990, where he strictly reviews coffee. So if you get the chance, you should have him on. Oh, I'm definitely going to look into that then because I, I love Sanction. He's literally a coffee expert. So he took us and he could tell you the place, but he took us to some local spot before uh, we played AMH, I believe. Uh, that was some dope coffee. And then Long Island, which we owe a lot to Mackie for that, uh, just from for him being from there, um, has always been like top three, if not number one place to play. Uh, before I, before I close that, uh, the first time we played there, um, was supposed to be at AMH and, uh, laid to rest, open the show. <laughs> it's, uh, which the lineup looking back on it is insane. It's like laid to rest, um, sanctioned, separated Jesus peace, us and bind was like the lineup. And there was probably like, this was before anybody was cool at all. So there was probably like 30, 40, maybe 50, 50 would be pushing it. I think that was the turnout. Anyhow, uh, AMH show gets shut down. Cause like laid to rest, like there was a guy that was not supposed to come to the show and he came to the show. He got his ass beat. And so everybody's like scrambling, like, where's the show going to be? So got moved to shakers like last minute. And everybody just like rushed over there, finished the show. And, uh, that's, that's a pretty crazy memory, but that show was definitely badass. So you have any shout outs you want to give? Where can people find Vatican online? Uh, yeah, I think we just got our site set up. Uh, thanks to our friend Quentin O'Neill. Uh, he is coding master. Uh, so VaticanVR.com has, uh, links to the new video, the merch, the songs, uh, we have like a bio page. Uh, and it's honestly just fun to look at. He kind of like made it as interesting as we wanted it to be. Um, yeah. And shout out, I guess to everybody that's supported us so far, we've had like a ton of like, I've gotten a ton of cool texts and messages from friends and like random people. And I'm just like trying to keep up and it's like overwhelming in the best possible way. So I am grateful for, for everything that's happened so far. And I, again, appreciate you having me on. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think you guys deserve every bit of recognition right now. It's amazing. And we, so, we all appreciate it for sure. Soak that shit up. Yeah. I'm, I'm, again, trying to live in the moment, but also trying to just be cool about it. I really hope uh, through 
COVID as things kind of settle out, you guys can, uh, I can either catch you guys up here or see you guys sometime soon. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the plan. As soon as like things are opening back up, we'll, uh, we'll be back up that way ASAP. So the show let's get, let's get a freaking bug brother. Yes. Let's grab a cup of Joe. Let's go. Well, take care, man. Uh, give everybody my love and, uh, absolutely. All right. Take it easy. All right, bro. Take care. Thanks again for listening to beans and breakdowns. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Nolan and the rest of the Vatican boys on their new release through unified called become a new God. It's available on all listening platforms. So go and check that out. Also check out the website at vaticanvr.com. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. Also to keep up with guest announcements, merch releases, and just general info, check us out on Instagram at beans and breakdowns and also on the web at beans and Thanks again for tuning into beans and breakdowns. And until next week, stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up. Beans and breakdowns.